I live and breathe landscape photography and I have traveled to some of the most incredible parts of the world. But I have also really enjoyed photographing more locally in Denmark where the landscapes are less epic. Over the years I have made many mistakes and they seem to repeat no matter if I travel or if I photograph more locally. I have learned to identify these mistakes and in this video I'll share 7 photography mistakes you need to avoid. Hi guys, so in this video I have a fantastic presentation for you, so let's just dig into it. And the first tip I want to share is do not pack up after sunset. I don't know how many times I have done this mistake, but I've kind of learned to like remember that just because the sun goes down and all the epic light isn't there anymore, there's still a really good basis for some great photographs. Now, obviously, you can use the blue hour to photograph small cottages, villages, and so forth, and implement the city lights. So if we look on this photo here from Iceland, the Icelandic Highlands, I was actually here on this hike to photograph the sunset. However, I didn't really catch the sunset properly, the sun set down behind a cloud and, and so forth. But here during the blue hour, I was on my way back to my camper van. You can actually see it in this photo, it's that little white dot there in the background, that's my camper van. Even though the sun has set and the light wasn't epic in the traditional sense, I really found that this photo here, of course due to the location and the composition and so forth, but the light is just much more calm. It's a beautiful landscape with a calm feeling to it. In less epic locations like here in Denmark, I went down to photograph the largest bridge we have and I would actually say that it is these photos here after sunset in the blue hour that I prefer the most. Very fine artsy here on the left with the moon up here, and then of course a little bit more traditional Mass Peter Iversen epic photo here. Same goes for yeah the epic landscapes. I have this one here of Kirkefell on the left, and then of course this one here of the fjord in northern Denmark. Both are from the blue hour in the morning, come a little bit before sunrise, so you can also capture the blue hour before sunrise. and. Of course, I have a lot of photos from this specific location here in Iceland, and when I compare these two photos, they're both great. I really like the sunrise photo on the right, which is of course another season than the one on the left, but nevertheless, over the years, when I keep coming back and looking at my photos from Kirkjufell in Iceland, I gotta admit that it is the blue hour photo, the calm blue hour photo, that for me has the longest longevity. So the next mistake is to not use the seasons to your advantage. Of course, when it's the Milky Way season, you should go out and focus on photographing the Milky Way. Of course, unless there's some other really incredible phenomenons out there, but use the time, use the opportunities when they are there. Same goes for heather. When there's blooming heather, then focus on photographing the heather. And of course, autumn, photograph the autumn colors. And when it's winter, photograph winter locations or winter photos. We have had like two weeks of like the best winter in like a decade here in Denmark. And sadly, due to my back problems, having returned in exactly that period, I by no means got to use it optimally. I was out a few times. So as you have seen in the last couple of videos, I have photographed some winter photos that I've been very, very happy about. So check out those videos if you haven't yet. So the next mistake to make is to be discouraged by less than optimal conditions. So I often find that I don't really bother going out if the conditions that I want is not exactly there. But I just find that again and again and again that even though I actually then end up going out, even though the conditions are not there, I still usually come away with some photos that I'm quite happy about. So the first example here is from Skoafoss in Iceland, and 
yeah, I do find that even though you have less than optimal conditions, usually as long as you have like a strong subject that usually carries it home. We came away with some really interesting photos anyway, even though it was really like blech weather. Same goes for these two photos here, the lighthouse on the left. I really like this moody day, but it was really like one of those days where we just wanted to like stay home, uh, showers coming down, raining, and like you're just like wet on your backside because the wind is in the back. And yeah, it was just, it's just annoying. But nevertheless, I do think that this lighthouse photo here is, is one of my favorites from Denmark. And then the photo here on the right, when I was up there, I knew I wanted kind of a photo like this, but because I was forced out, I only had like one or two days up there. So I knew that the sky was a little bit like, you know, boring and blank, but I went anyway. And I got this photo here with the geese flying above, which is just, I like it. And these couple of photos here where we just had like wild garlic all over the forest floor. Absolutely fantastic. I really, really wanted a um, morning with fog, which would just have made it all look so magical. But I didn't really get those conditions, but I went anyway. And on the same morning as these two here, I got this photo, which is one of my favorites from last year. I also really like these two photos here, but the wild garlic here with the sun coming through, uh, which is like three hours after sunrise. Really, yeah, it's really one of my favorite photos I got during the wild garlic season last year. And on this day here in Glencoe, again, I just had to go. Before we started the hike up the mountain, it was just overcast and a little bit flat and a little bit boring. But nevertheless, it cleared enough for the sun being able to peek through. And I just got so many great photos on this day. So definitely do not be discouraged by less than optimal conditions. You never know what's going to happen. If you struggle with composition and landscape photography, be sure to get my ebook and the follow up. They are designed to be easy to read and have loads of examples. You can get both of them via the links in the description of this video. So another mistake that I see all the time, again and again and again, and that is just messy photos. And this is a bit more like a practical tip. So as you can see in these two photos here with all these beach houses, there's a lot of yeah car trails in the sand in front of the houses. And it's just too much for you to be able to remove it in Photoshop. So you can, of course, either find a place where there are less car tracks, or you can maybe shoot from a lower angle as I do on the right photo. And in this photo here, where you can see it's the exactly same composition. However, the conditions are so, so different. In this snow here, you can see we have like snow patches here on this foreground tree that leads your eye over there. We have a lot of like black or dark. You can see the ground through the snow and all the snow patterns here. Like it's, it's a beautiful day, but for a photo, there's definitely the left photo is just so much more simple and atmospheric and ethereal and yeah, magical. So you can definitely also avoid making messy photos by going at the right time of day or at the right time of year. And in this particular case here, you can see we have some branches, fallen branches here in the foreground and simply just by removing them in field, I already clean up the photo. When you're in the field, if you can clean up the photo and here's the final photo. And of course, if you're not able to clean up the photo in the field, you can always do so in Photoshop or Lightroom. I have a 40 or 50 minutes lecture on different ways to clean up your photo in my Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course. Link in the description, shameless plug. So yeah, here is before I cleaned the photo and this one here is after, much more clean. So you can see before and after here. 
So another mistake is to forgetting your old photos on your hard drives. Over the years, you of course improve how you perceive photos. So you might see something a couple of years later that you didn't spot in the period where you were working on those photos. So from time to time, it's a good idea to go back and just go through your old photos. That's what I did with this fantastic day in Glencoe. Again, I got this is probably my best and most efficient day of photography. Over the years, I've of course also learned to edit a little bit different and my editing skills have been improved. So I know that I can edit a photo into something that is more in line with how I like my photos to end up. And this photo here is one of my favorites. I went through this folder here a couple of months ago and uh, yeah, I just found so many photos and just started editing them in a way that I really, really like. Uh, this one here is also just fantastic. Like how we have the side light that hits Sophie here in the foreground. Foreground is lit and then we have the midground here with the mountain, which is not lit. And then we have again light here in the background. So we just have all these layers to go through. And then, of course, also this photo here. This is Glencoe Valley and the road leading down to Glencoe. And we just had like the sun streaming down. This photo also works great vertically. So as I said, I also learned to edit my photos differently. In this particular case here, from my first tour to the Faroe Islands, the photo on the left is the original straight out of camera, or it's one of the brackets. And I ended up with the photo here on the right that you've probably seen a few times on Instagram by now. So another mistake is to underestimate blue skies in your photos. Generally, as landscape photographers, we like to photograph around the golden hour, the blue hour, night sky and so forth. And blue skies have a kind of a bad rap. And I'm the first to admit that blue skies can be very hard to handle. I'm not talking about like direct midday light shining straight down and flattening the landscape. As you can see here on the right photo from the Faroe Islands, it's midday light, it's a bit flat, it, it doesn't really have that, you know, wow effect. And the same with the left one here from Death Valley. It, it, no, they don't, they don't really work. However, blue skies above a yellow canola field. Just look at the color contrast here. It's so simple, yet very Swedish or Ukrainian or whatever. Nevertheless, <laughs> really, really powerful, beautiful summerish photos, summer wipes. And this photo here from the Peak District in England, just the most amazing morning with fog. But this is like three hours after sunrise and the fog is just where it's lifting. So we have this fantastic atmosphere. We have the blue skies above. We have the wet green grass underneath, which just gives this fresh atmospheric morning feeling. And this one here from Iceland, we are way out of the golden hour, but we still had like a layer of fog laying down there. So up with the drone photographing this beautiful volcano crater here in the background, and then just, yeah, a snowy foreground, a very simple, very fresh, almost monochrome photo. Stocksness on the left, Kierkefell on the right. As you can see in the Stocksness photo, it is late in the day, but we still have the blue sky. And in the way I edited it, it's just very contrasty, very powerful, right in your face there. And the one from Kierkefell, again, bluish eyes, blue sky, again, almost monochrome. It's like monochrome, it means it's one color, not black and white, but one color. It's, it's just two very calm, yet powerful-ish photos, hard to describe. But the blue sky, the blue colors is basically what makes these photos here. Would they have looked amazing with an amazing fiery sky? Yes, but they would have been very, very different. And I think, looking at it, I prefer these. So the last mistake I want to share with you is to not actively seek out bad weather, or stormy weather, or really the kind of weather where you just want to sit inside, because you can get some absolutely epic photos. So... 
Here is a few photos from a day in the Faroe Islands. We started going to this location here, just photographed the waves, got so many photos of these epic, epic waves with the sea stacks here in the background. We moved on, photographed the largest waterfall in the Faroe Islands. Then we moved on to this location here where the wind just threw again the water spray all around. The sun came out from time to time, created a rainbow. Afterwards, we drove back to the big waterfall that I just showed and photographed it more up close. So it was like four locations on a very stormy, very windy, rainy day, which is just like really, really great from locations that I've been so many times, but I got so many great photos on this one single day. And a few days later, where we went to Kalsoy, we just had like shower after shower that hit us. From time to time, we couldn't even see the mountains here in the midground. But nevertheless, in between, we managed to get some photos which just looked so, so good. And I got some of my favorite photos from this location, especially this one here. I love the simplicity and the mood of this photo. And when I compare it to another photo I got during summer, uh, one and a half year ago, I like both photos, but I do think that in the end, the one I, I personally would hang on my wall is probably the moody one. I really like the one with the good light, but I really like that moody silhouette one so, so much. So I'm curious to hear which one you like the most, right down in the description. And when I compare to more recent photos, I really like the golden hour photo there on the right. But in the end, the one I personally prefer, the one I think would have the most longevity for me, I think it's, I think it's the one on the left. I, I know that, yeah, golden hour is supposed to be like this magical thing for us photographers and I actively seek it out again and again and again, but I think this, the, the left moody one here is, is my favorite of these two. Again, let me hear down in the comments which one do you prefer. And then of course, like, seek out a storm or something like that, really, <laughs> like, I got these four photos on the same day and I went to another location nearby where I got these four photos also. Got so many photos with these storm minimalist locations here. Be sure to check out that video afterwards. Uh, it was just so, such a good day. So due to the ongoing pandemic and people still wanting to learn and so forth, I, for the next week, will give you a hundred percent... Ah! Not a hundred percent, that's a bit too much. A hundred dollars discount <laughs> on my Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course. Here you can learn how I edit my photos. All the techniques that I use to create the photos that you have seen throughout this presentation, I share in that course. How to dodge and burn the moody skies to really bring out the clouds. How to clean up the photos. And really just like make them pop in that ethereal and atmospheric way, how to add atmosphere and glow and so forth. So the coupon code is down in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, be sure to like it and let me hear which of the photos that I just showed are your favorites, the moody ones or the more uh, lighting wise ones. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to use the coupon code when you enroll in the Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course.